Today, I want to talk about something which I find quite interesting. Authoritarianism and anti-authoritarianism. The reason for this is because as the concept goes, it's a truly fascinating thing. Keep in mind, everything shown here as one thing. Because as you go on with other sources in my whole list of stuff I'll be approaching, it will get more complex. As for the recent changes, as would be seen in the quality increase, there's a new, there's a new laptop, and as said in my channel's update post, I'm just experimenting with new technology stuff, which I could never have done beforehand due to technical limitations. So this video will be me trying to do older styles of content I started off doing with a more edited format, and I hope everyone enjoys it. As for where you can communicate more of about feedback, which I will actually encourage you to do, I put, started doing stuff on the community stuff that I never did beforehand. These are polls are purely optional. I'll be doing updates, and as I said here, new laptop able to stream library games. To clarify, the games will be for if I'm doing political commentary. I'm doing something like this one now, which is a research video. I'll be showing articles, links, so on, and as my standard, I will link everything. Please, if you want to communicate, you can just go to the community tab here. Thank you very much. This is the basic update. And I'll the final thing to note before we move on to the actual video, and sorry for the length of the intermission here, I just want to get this out of the way and explained. If you think there's anything to prove on, don't feel scared. This go to my community tab click on comment and just type away. I'll check every now and then. If it's good advice, I'll of course act on it. If Even if it's like criticism, fantastic. That helps as well. And with that, that ends all the announcements needed for this and I'll get on to the video in question. This Reddit, so this Reddit section here is quite interesting to this point. Why are anti authoritarians designated as mentally ill? There's something I'll show afterwards which is relevant to this, so do not worry. I'm not going to leave this sort of thing about mental illness just in the dark for you to figure out yourself. <laughs> I don't worry. I'd never do it to you. This is an interesting thing though, because I can actually relate too much of this. Many people who, with severe and or depressed, are also anti authoritarians Often a major pain of their lives that fuels anxiety and or depression is fear that their, their com complaints for illeg illegitimate authorities will cause some financial and social marginalisation, therefore compliance and will cause a form of death. Yeah, fair enough. This is where a lot of this issues comes into factors of anti-capitalism -capital and so on. Because this one here, pretty much why am I unemployed right now? Wouldn't let my boss snoop through my personal emails, and he did it, did it anyway when I was sick. Uh, called hours to point you've not coming to work, and vomiting two hours, straight told you to give me password to your personal account, so on, so on, so on. You can read. <laughs> I'm not going to. I will link everything anyway. The point is here is that the issues with authority as a whole is more complex nowadays. Before, it was just state leaders and others. But ever since the end of the Cold War, the capitalist superstructure went into overdrive as a whole. And yeah, a lot of there's a lot of questioning of capitalist power balance. And as for the medical stuff, there's this. This is an interesting thing. Opposition to fighting disorder. I'm not going to be expert on this. Don't think I am. I just find this interesting. 
And something interesting, if you find interesting as well, here you go. You can just look at this yourself. One thing to note over here is really critical to understand. Talking about totalitarianism and authoritarianism, there's lots of studies about it. They like to talk about democracy, how it is better than and fights against autocracy and totalitarianism. One common point is elections to be freer and a free press. Free press is something which is very, very skeptical. Because in this case it says Each of these aspects is crucial to allow the scrutiny of the government's actions in a democracy. The ability to criticise the government is making it possible for people to speak their minds, which in turn encourages creativity, innovation and, and improvement. Sure, to some extent. And if that was the case of what all journalists are, are doing, fine. But that clearly isn't the case, as we see in lots of examples. Because when it, but when it says when, it, when an autocratic government or authoritarian government, sorry, makes it hard for journalists to do a job, by example, restricting their ability to operate by encouraging attacks against the media, it inevitably makes it harder for now different out of different from the government to emerge. But then, that point misses the whole point entirely. What if the crackdown came as a result of media misinformation? Because in source it says the government can manipulate the population through propaganda, but so can the media. The media can manipulate people equally as much by their own media empires. It's one thing to say that quote unquote authoritarian governments are evil and they can just propagandize without free press. But as we see in like Australia and the US, what happened with media? They're just corporate shills. They lie, slander, attack people who want progress, and all for the whims of a corporate entity. Solace. Media itself then makes propaganda. It goes both ways. So it's really, really hard to just sit here and say, Oh, those authoritarian countries and governments doing this and that, going against journalists. But as you saw in like Hong Kong during the 2019 2020 affair, there was people with like journalist passes who shouldn't have, have had them. Journalists were spreading misinformation, distorting angles, distorting news out news, and distorting stuff being sent to the home countries. A certain narrative was talked about. People were ignored. And then when the fake people went to talk to the Chinese media instead, they were seen by the Western journalists who did the lying as liars, actors, communist sympathizers. So don't be fooled when people say that argumentation that a free press is the best way to go. Not in all cases, no. Sometimes a free press can get too powerful and needs to be cold and controlled. Another interesting case to mention here, which is to counter, is the issues they want to put on primarily what they see as authoritarian countries as corruption. Is there corruption issues in most countries? Yes. Is there a disparity on issues? Yes. Is there generally some high levels of corruption in some countries? Also, yes. But corruption may allow elites to gain le legitimacy. That is something happens in even our own societies often. And can it be attributed inherently to authoritarianism itself, but also can be applied to parliamentarians also. This is an interesting side point. Talking about the point, that's quite interesting about non-compliance. 
It's actually quite an interesting thing. I actually do recommend people read this. It's as as in my research, stuff like this is actually fascinating coming across gems like this, where he where he lets you elaborate much, much more about issues. Then we yeah, here you go, for example. Example like example like this, right? Where do you like to say anti where it's like where it's comparing anti authority to anti authoritarianism within the anarchist concept? Which is actually quite interesting as a whole. Where it says anti authority is not a synonym synonymous with anti authoritarianism. Anti authority means opposing of all authority, while anti authoritarianism means opposing authorities authoritarians, authoritarianism, and illegitimate authority. But then there is a new question. What is a illegitimate authority and what is a legitimate authority? As the lines of can blur often between what is illegitimate and legitimate, depending on your affiliation, status, and class. And there's the issue, one of the core issues anyway, with anti authoritarianism. Because what is authoritarian? That answer of what is authoritarian will change from person to person as they walk across the lines of society in progress. Is it authoritarian to not allow, let's say, cultists to exist? As in practicing their and spreading cult views which causes harm? Yes or no? There's some who defend cults, some who oppose cults. Is it right then that people were killed in the name of the state as soldiers? Some defend, some don't defend. There's lines of ambigu ambiguity in all of this. What is illegitimate or is illegitimate is often a fine line which is bound by other factors influenced by other means. Response here. It's from Sankai Research on Marxism.org because I like to look there on occasion on topics. Despite, uh, this is talking about something else entirely, but it has a really good point to this thing here. Despite differences, the social and political character of many forces gathered in Seattle last year was not so very different from the forces that in 1968 shook, shook the established order from Paris to Chicago. Then, as now, in, in, insurgent youth mixed anti-imperialism, utopian and idealist third-worldism with liberal single-issue reformism. Then, now as we... Demonstrators sufficiently common to all, all allow fleeting unity was vague, anti-capitalism, subject to a wide variety of interpretations. For some, capitalism was an, an internal evil to be kept in check through trust-busting and regulation. Others were prepared to strike more rhetorically radical postures, but usually less clear conceptions about how existing social systems could be uprooted and what should replace it. This Reddit thread here also is quite good and it says one interesting note. Using terms like authoritarianism are not helpful, especially if it means one could be existing their exerting their will over another. This is if this definition then authoritarianism would be would we definitely be good under certain circumstances? Absolutely correct. The way a lot of this stuff about anti euphotism and euphotism is talked about is very vague, ambiguous often. People who say they are anti euphotarian don't say much more than that often. They're often saying a lot of stuff like Freedom Fighter. Actually, let me just pick up something quickly here. Give me two seconds speak. So if I'm silent, I'm not ignoring you, I'm just typing. Yeah. 
this is a perfect example here, right? Joshua Wong. One of the separatist people in the 2019, 2020, 2020 Hong Kong chaos. He used the word. Maybe not. If, yeah. If not him, I, f I actually forgot because I, um, but either way, even being described as quote unquote anti authoritarian in this context is vapid, right? Because is he really anti authoritarian? Was this being anti authoritarian itself? Because if you looked at it realistically, then no, it was not anti authoritarian. The movement he was representing, mostly in Hong Kong, was very much the opposite of anti authoritarianism. They were using their own authoritarianism to counter what they saw as authoritarianism. Is it, but is it any different necessarily than being authoritarian? No. This one here as well is also quite good. I think there's I think there's a really good point which should be really mentioned here. I'll read some of it out. I'll give you the whole thing. This is a little bit in, like nearly halfway in. So um, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Anti authoritarianism, so defined, should be not confused with what might be called contra authoritarianism. The distinction is a fine but important one. A person is talking about anti authoritarian stand if and only if he dislikes all coercion and refuses to be coercive himself. A person who acting in a, in a contra authoritarian way, and if and only if he refuses to submit to such coercion as is being used upon him. So, taking the, taking the two classes of anti and contra authoritarian people are not identical. They intersect. There are many people who are contra, but not anti authoritarian. They are refusing to submit to the authority of others that they may not stand opposed to the exercise of authority in general, and this, and may in fact be quite willing to acquire and use it themselves. A good example of a person who is contra, but not anti imperialist authoritarian, sorry, is the peasant turned banned to the pre-industrial era. Again, there will be some who are anti, but not contra authoritarian. They may not be coercive themselves, and this is like all coercion, but being weak, kneeled, when, facing, when faced with the authority of others, and always submit to it. Once you arrive at this point, because it makes, uh, once you arrive at this point, it's clear that Few actions are indeed anti authoritarian. For a while, many are aimed at preventing some groups from acting coercively. In almost all cases, and in a greater proportion of successful cases, the prevention itself is carried out coercively. Unless it takes the form of persuasion, the, the prevention is always carried out through penalizing or threatening to penalize in some way the initial coercive party. And this itself is coercive and authoritarian. Let us take an example. It is being held that all strikes are anti authoritarian. No. It is true that almost all strikes the strikers are fighting against the power and authority of those employing them, so acting in at least in a contra authoritarian way. But less often are strikers attempt to reduce the authority of the employers. Usually, they are interested solely in winning certain well defined demands, such as wage, rise in wages, a reduction in working hours, or an improvement in working conditions. And once it, this is won, they are quite content to let other decisions revert back to the hands of their employers. There is no, diff there is no attempt to, to deprive the owners or managers of their right to make decisions. This, there is only an, an interference in the future that is made. Even strikers, which are attempted to, divide, to deprive the owners of matters at least in part of the power to make choices, are not generally are not generally anti authoritarian. And this is the aspect of what of, of what example brings out the general point above that attempts to derive, do deprive people of authority are nearly always carried out coercively. 
For the, stri- for the strike is a weapon, and weapons are coercive instruments. The strike is carried out because it hurts the employer. It hurts him by interrupting his production schedules and makes him unable to produce goods and on time for his customers, which may seek supplies elsewhere. The interruption of output hurts in another way too. There is normally a considerable burden or cost which has to be borne when when most of the workers are out of out on strike and production has fallen. The value sell is lost as a result of the strike is created in a way to sort of workers participating in it. So by hurting the employer strikes makes makes us makes sense of demands of less unpleasant of two situations. The obtained the demands by penalizing the employer if he does not grant them. I will now leave my concluding thoughts here. Anti authoritarianism as a concept. Do I think it's necessarily a bad thing? Sometimes no. But those who say they're anti authoritarian, if you subscribe to the Anchor's camp of, of anti authoritarian or the Contra of authoritarian, anti authoritarian camp. Down to you. But to but to deny being authoritarian at all yourself, that itself is a bad route to go. Most of the most successful things in achievements and in social progress and political progress. Even national liberation came through force and authoritarian like strategies. Did did people listen when to just simple demands? No. They listened to actions and physical threats. People's lives on the line and so on. So at the end of the day, anti imperialism and anti authoritarianism can link to a, to a certain extension, but then ends when they need to finally make the move to crush what is actually causing the issues in the first place. I hope this was an interesting video, and please do comment.